Have your Amazon PPC campaigns been struggling to attain profitability? Now it's one thing to optimize for increased sales velocity, it's a whole other animal to actually optimize for profitability. In this video, I'm going to show you an Amazon PPC strategy that you can use and in three easy steps, I'm going to show you how to take some of your, your dud campaigns into profitable money making campaigns. That way it can continually feed the prosperity of your Amazon business. All right, so PPC strategy number one, keep your bids under 5% of your actual sales price. Now, the reason why you want to stay under 5% of your sales price is because anything more than 5% um, is what's considered an aggressive bid. And though it may increase sales velocity, you have to really find a balance between low ACOS and sales velocity. And by keeping the bids 5% of your sales price, you'll be able to competitively, competitively compete with other sellers and that will give your account or your listing, I should say, wiggle room to grow. Now, if competition increases, that wiggle room of 5% will allow you to maintain a steady ACOS, right? And that's what mostly contributes to ACOS. It's not necessarily how high you're converting, though that does play a factor. It's actually looking at how much you're paying uh, with CPC, so cost per click, relative to what your actual sales price is. And so if bids, for example, are a dollar and your product is $15, you can already see that the, equilib the equilibrium for your actual niche might be a little bit saturated. And that's one of the, the main uh, cruxes of this lesson actually is to also audit your product to see if there's oversaturation and the easiest way to do that is to look at what the bids are for some of your for some of your main keywords now this is what will allow you to grow as an Amazon seller because again if your product is $15 and if you're staying at 5% and you're not getting any impressions and this and these campaigns are for all match types so exact broad phrase and auto um, so if you're finding that your bids are between you know more than 5%, 5 to 10%, even higher than 10%, then your strategy needs to be a little bit different. You can't necessarily hope for high sales velocity when your uh, product can't even get impressions at 5%. So that means you're going to have to increase your bids, which will make profitability you know very hard to achieve. So one thing to do is if you're having to get out of that 5% range, you'll start to consider or you should consider if maybe that your niche may be oversaturated. Okay. Now, I'm not saying you can't make a ton of sales. I'm just having you set realistic expe expectations for your account. And ultimately, keeping that 5% threshold will allow you to sustain your sales and grow your sales without keeping with by putting a cap on your costs. Okay. So that's what that 5% um, guideline will help you do. It'll help you maintain your costs and it will allow you to keep your sales consistently growing. And again, like I just said, if you're finding that you're more in the 10 to 15% um, of the actual sales price of your product on the bid level, then you should really consider going after maybe more long tail keywords and that'll help you usually and generally speaking long tail keywords are much less competitive so you can scrape profit a bit profitability if you just do your homework and make a nest of long tail keywords that are in that range of five percent that i've been going over if you're outside that five percent it's going to be very hard to scale your business and it'll be very hard to compete um, as new sellers enter the marketplace so that five percent is a good um, indicator of saturation all right, so stay within that 5% bid range and you'll be able to keep profitability consistent over time. All right, let's get into number two. All right, so PPC tip number two, go ahead and reduce the amount of keywords in your actual campaigns. A lot of sellers still have thousands of keywords in their PPC campaigns. Now, what makes that hard is you can't scale your business with thousands of keywords. If you drip feed 50 keywords a month into your campaigns, 
over time, maybe you can, you know, eventually get all those keywords inside of your campaigns producing sales. But to sustain profitability, you really need a focus. And the easiest way to do that is to reduce the amount of keywords in your campaigns by no more than 100 keywords. 100 keywords is, is the sweet spot. And each month, you'll be able to churn out and add an additional 50 keywords and take out 50 keywords that weren't producing any results for you, okay? And the reason why you want to churn out keywords every single month, but keep it you know, nice and trim, is because you need to know what your profitability is going to be for each individual keyword that are relevant to your product, okay? And by having too many keywords, you don't allow efficient ad spend for one, and efficient time to um, grow your sales portfolio. And so there's a ton of sales that you're potentially leaving on the table, but by having so many keywords in your PPC campaigns, you're not allowing the PPC engine, if you will, to optimize correctly. There's, it's, it's accounting for too many variables. And so with, by having too many variables to optimize, you're not gonna be optimized for anything. And so that's where sellers are really getting into trouble is having way too many keywords. And this again goes for all match types, you know, broad, match, exact, auto. And so even with product display ads, you know, if you're targeting competitors, um, you know, have no more than 10 product ASINs that are again, 100% related to your product. And two, you have a better deal because if you have a better deal with competitors that are 100% relative to your product, then odds, the odds of you converting a customer when they click on your ad for the better deal are much higher so therefore it will maximize efficient ad spend and conversions and that's what you want okay so keep your campaigns no more than 100 keywords and make a master list maybe you do have a thousand keywords right now trim them down and in that master list go ahead and every single month so every 30 days you'll go ahead and add 50 more keywords and take out keywords that were, you know, maybe bleeders or just didn't get very many impressions at all. And so the ones that generally don't get sales, go ahead and take those out and add the one and add new keywords and consistently churn them out. And another thing to that is for the bleeder keywords, let's say you are making sales for certain keywords, but the ACOS is just a bit too high, go ahead and make a list of those keywords and in a separate campaign. And go ahead and do this for um, all match types, exact, broad, phrase, and, and um, no, actually just those three. And use the keywords that you're not very profitable on and go ahead and put those for all match types at very incredibly low bids. So you still want to get impressions for those keywords, but you don't want to pay premium prices for those keywords. So in that master list of keywords, so this is basically like a two-in-one uh, for number two, a master list of keywords that you are making sales on, but it's not very profitable for you. Separate those campaigns and separate those keywords into separate campaigns for all match types and keep your bids about 50% below Amazon's suggested bid. This will maximize, this will help you keep your profitability and still allow you to potentially rank for keywords and show up for keywords that are 100% relevant but are just a little bit too competitive. So you don't want to stay on those keywords, but you do want to show up in separate campaigns and keep your other keywords that are profitable alone and let those campaigns flourish, okay? So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into number three. All right, so strategy number three is to keep the keywords in your campaigns 100% relevant. Now, this can reduce the amount of keywords you have in your campaigns right now by maybe up to 50%, right? A lot of keywords are not necessarily relevant to your listing. They might be a little relevant, but again, if you wanna maximize profitability, it's very important that you optimize for 100% relevancy. And then once you have a huge profit producing uh, engine in your, inside your PPC campaigns, then at that point you can, can continually drip feed slowly and in small batches, maybe by 20 keywords, keywords that are loosely related to your product. So a good example of that would be, let's say charcoal powder. So with charcoal powder, um, you know, it's that black, that black tarry, charcoaly powder that, you know, kind of went viral a few years ago. You would want to put the keywords with 
the the word powder in them. Now, if there's keywords that have paste, now the product isn't a paste. So if there's charcoal toothpaste, you have to realize that the odds of converting those customers that are specifically typing in, you know, one keyword and you're showing up for another, you're showing up uh, as a completely different product for that keyword. It's going to make it hard for you to convert. So only add those loosely related, but it's the same niche is what I'm trying to tell you. It's still going to whiten your teeth. It's still charcoal related, but the powder is very different from the paste, for example, or charcoal uh, mouthwash things to that nature, uh, or charcoal, or bamboo toothbrush with the black little um, part, the, the actual brush. So those would be great keywords in a loose match campaign. And so for those in particular, it's best, again, you'll want to leverage all match types. And once you're already producing, you know, a satisfactory ACOS for your account, then at that point, go ahead and add those loose those loose keywords like paste, uh, bamboo toothbrushes as an example into a separate campaign and again you always want to leverage all match types okay because if you're leveraging all match types you maximize your products exposure and that's ultimately what you want to do you want to maximize your exposure and that will allow you to have you know a controlled CPC as well because when you maximize your exposure your CPC isn't completely dependent on one or two campaigns, right? Where it's just if one bid stagnant and, you know, hope for the best. This allows you to maximize, you know, wrong spellings, phrases that are mismatched, um, but still have the actual keywords in the, in the search term. So you do need to maximize all match types for all of these campaigns that I'm mentioning. But uh, back to the... Um, the actual step here, go ahead and add those loosely matched keywords once you're already profitable. And again, you'll have those campaigns separated into um, their own campaigns because it's going to be easier for you to optimize and maintain those campaigns for profitability over the long term. If you have all your keywords and if you have all your, um, if you have all of these sort of different keywords inside a few campaigns, it's going to be very difficult for you to measure ACOS at the account level. Okay, you can even create a separate portfolio and then put portfolio, you know, your profitability campaign, your profitable campaigns, your loosely matched campaigns, and inside those portfolios, you can add these these campaigns that I'm telling you about. So, um, if you also, I've been getting a lot recently about product research. Still, you know, people want to be able to find profitable products continually. And you know, but they lack a certain criteria to go off of. So, in this next video, I'm about to show you how you can consistently find profitable products to sell on Amazon with absolute certainty. And you can also use my filtration uh, method, if you will, to filter through all of the noise of products. To so that way, at the very end of it, you'll have a diamond. So, if you're putting in charcoal, and out comes a diamond. And so, if you have the wrong criteria, criteria, however. If you put, you know, a bologna sandwich in the filter, a, a diamond's not going to come out, right? It's, it's going to be way off. So I'm about to show you in this next video how you can literally find winning products. All you need is the right criteria and method to do so. So don't miss the, that training. And also, please join my private group. The link's below in the description. I'm going to be releasing a ton of new trainings uh, for the month of June and July that are going to be very potent, especially for things to get ready for coming in Q4. So you don't want to miss that. Join my private group and I'll see you guys in the next video.